Hey everybody, it's me, Zombie, and I am starting on some power armor from Fallout 4, specifically the T60 model. I am just beginning this process of making this big armored costume, so I thought I would make a video to help you guys who are also wanting to begin a big armored costume, some kind of tips and some essential tools that I use when starting a new project. Here is a big piece of EVA foam. I buy these big sheets off of Amazon. I think they're 20 bucks a piece for like five sheets. I know you can get them in different packs, different thicknesses, whatever you want. This specific foam is about half an inch thick. It is really thick, but I kind of needed it because I have big thick armor out, out here. So far, I have used about five pieces of this big EVA. And as you can see, I've only really made like some littler bits of the costume. So when you stock up EVA, make sure to stock up a lot because it does suck if you're on a roll and you're making a lot of progress and then suddenly you're out of supplies. No one likes to be in that position, but it happens to all of us all the time. For other little details, I use this kind of foam. It is yoga mat foam. I'm gonna post a video exactly where you can find this foam right down in the description box. So click it after you're done with this one. Anyway, one of my other favorites, we're starting a foam project. My shop is a mess, I'm trying to find it. Ha! Contact Cement by Wellwood. I love these little bottles because they come with this little brush applicator. And mine is a mess because I have been using it a lot. It comes with this little brush applicator you can put on the edges of your foam. Usually let it sit for 10 minutes or until the sides no longer appear wet and they're matte. That means that your foam is ready to be stuck together forever. And it makes these really awesome seams. Um, see, this one is barely noticeable. It'll be even less noticeable after I put Plasti Dip over the foam to seal it before painting. After you're done with your bottle of contact cement, which is inevitable if you are making an entire suit of armor, you can just get a bigger can of it for cheaper and just use a funnel to funnel this stuff into your bottle so you still have that awesome applicator. Another thing I've been using to start this costume is using anything from 80 grit sandpaper, which is super, super rough, and 220, which is really soft. Um, you can get more soft or more rough sandpaper. These are just the ones that I've been using to sand the edges of my pieces. As for some bends, like in this beginning of a thigh piece or this beginning of a forearm, I like to use a heat gun. I've had the same heat gun since some of my really old videos and it works awesome. It has a high setting and a low setting, and it works great. Just be careful not to burn yourself. Another thing I love to work with is a hot glue gun, which is plugged in right now, so that's why I can't bring it up super close to the camera. But I use this to reinforce some of the edges and to install elastic and Velcro onto my bits of foam. Just helps reinforce some of the edges. Contact cement is going to make your foam stick forever, but you know, when you're moving around or hugging people or doing other crazy stuff in your costume, everything gets a little bit weak and starts to wear and tear a little bit. So having that extra layer of glue really does help keep your costume stable all day. Another adhesive I love to use is super glue. I like getting the bigger bottles of super glue compared to the little ones because you kind of get more bang for your buck. This one in particular I got from Hobby Town. I always have trouble finding the bigger bottles of super glue, but you can find them at Hobby Town or online. I use super glue to kind of glue on the smaller details. Since you have to have the adhesive on both sides while using contact cement, it is easier to apply some of the smaller details with super glue. So that is personally what I prefer. Another thing I love to have handy, whoa. Another thing I love to have handy is a metal ruler. For making paper patterns, this is also amazing. That brings me to another essential that I really like to use. You can get these big rolls of paper at a lot of hobby stores. I like using them to make patterns for my foam. Here's one that I use for the thigh piece. And it's really handy, just cheap big pieces of paper if you don't have paper already on hand. Here is another tool that I have learned to love. Just a box cutter with some really sharp extra blades. 
one blade lasts me for a pretty long time. So just getting one of these and a pack of extra blades is really awesome. It gives you some really clean cuts on your phone. This is a wood burning tool. I use it for a lot of little details and it just heats up and you can put different ends on it. See, this one is like a circular end. So you can make like little like screw marks. The burning tool comes with a bunch of different little accessories. So you can choose which one works best for the project you're working on and you get some pretty cool results. You're also gonna wanna put a coat of Plasti Dip spray over your foam project before you paint it. It helps seal it so the paint doesn't chip. Those are some of my favorite tools that I like to have around when I'm first starting a foam project. So I hope that helps you out too. Now to show you the pieces that I have done so far. So here is the beginning of a thigh piece. Um, it's gonna have lots of details put onto it. I like to start simple, start with big simple shapes and work on top of that. Uh, it kind of helps me feel less overwhelmed. So that is a good tip for you guys who maybe haven't made a suit of armor before. Speaking of starting small, I also like starting with the smaller pieces. Here is the beginning of the cod piece. It has its first layer of plastic dip on it. This is the front part of the cod piece. And I kind of give you guys a show up. Blah. Give you guys a close up so you can see some of the smaller details. Speaking of starting simple, I have a both of my knees actually are being plasti dipped right now for the beginning of my shin pieces. Uh, this seemed like more of an intricate piece to start with, and I like the smaller, more intricate pieces. Here are the elbows that are going to be put on the forearm armor. So this armor is gonna be pretty big, but it'll be a lot of fun to wear. Oh, lastly, but not leastly, the butt piece, which I've been sanding on this evening and installing some elastic so I can make it into a belt around the cod piece. I'll probably have a little bit of Velcro on the butt so it'll stay in place on my butt. That is all the progress that I have done so far on my power armor. I hope this video helps you start your own big armor project or a little armor project or whatever project. I'm having a lot of fun with this so far, so I hope you guys stay tuned for the rest of my videos because I will be documenting this entire costume. So thank you guys again so much for watching. If you have any other questions, check out the videos that I put in my description box, lots of other videos about foam that I've made, and ask a question in the comments because I love reading you guys' comments. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.